What's your biggest secret today? One time I hired a male prostitute with my gay best friend in Las Vegas. Welcome to The Secret Room. I'm Ben Ham. Today, a couple stories about former loves, neither of which go where you might think. (laughs) Oh, God, this is bad. (laughs) That's Cheryl. We'll hear from her in a moment. But first up, Tiffany. I'm 35 years old. She left her husband in 2011. We had been together since we were in our early 20s and... Had a child together. In 2011, I ran into my high school sweetheart who just swept me off my feet. And um, and I quickly left my then-husband and remarried in about six months. It's been over five years, and every single night I dream about my ex-husband. It's always good dreams. A lot of times it's us sneaking around and trying to be together and keep it from our spouses or it's us just living everyday life. But in the current time, it's him just being with me and being my friend and laughing with me. I feel like I'm so excited to go to bed every night because I go to a totally different life. Although my life now is fine and it's happy. We have kids. Um, I miss them. I feel like it's where I was supposed to be. Tiffany has great kids from her second marriage and she enjoys her life as it is. But if she'd seen the future, would she have stayed with her first husband? She longs for what she gave up. And now, Cheryl enters the secret room. This is a story about my klepto ex-husband who never got caught. (laughs) He's very smooth. They were married for 10 years, and she's friends with her ex, and that's plenty. You're about to find out why. Mm. Why do you say he's smooth? Because he he just doesn't appear to be like a klepto. He just seems like a really nice guy. He's fairly handsome, you know, so... He, he uses that, especially with, like, female cashiers and whatnot. He always picks female cashiers. So how, how did you guys meet? He was a clerk at the Pickwick. And I went in to go buy a newspaper, and he tried to charge me $3. And I told him I thought he was uh, trying to rip me off. And then he told me that he was just trying to sell me my sunglasses that I had placed on top of the newspaper while I was paying. And I kept going back to buy newspapers until he asked me out. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when did you kind of figure out that he was a a klepto? Well, we would go shopping at the Walmart, and we both wear contact lenses. And back in the day, you bought both the little cleaning solution plus the saline solution. And the little bottle of the cleaning solution was kind of expensive even back in the day. It was like five or eight bucks. And so we would put that in the cart first, and then we'd go get dog food and put the dog food on top of the contact lens cleaner. And then when we got to the checkout, we would just leave the bag, being that it was too heavy to put on the conveyor belt. And so they would just scan it while I was there in the cart and we would walk out that way. So that just became like the pattern when we would go shopping together. The same with like watch batteries, because those are kind of expensive too. So we'd stick our little watch batteries under the dog food. (laughs) Now we're not talking about big time heists here by any means, but they were premeditated. I asked Cheryl how involved she was in planning out these mini capers. He just did it, and I kind of went along with it. Uh Uh-huh. And what did you think? Were you, like, surprised? Like, Um, WTF, what are you doing? A little bit, but, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money back then, so I was like, oh, okay. You know, didn't feel too bad. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot of money, but, you know, I felt bad that, I mean, there was a sense of right and wrong. Right. You know, so... So at this point, they have progressed from contact solution to watch batteries. And then, as it happened, they found themselves looking at jewelry. 
I really liked this one bracelet that was in there. So he called the clerk over and asked the clerk to open up the jewelry cabinet, and he did. And so I tried on the bracelet, and I liked it. And the clerk kind of walked away, and I had long sleeves on. So he told me, just pull down your sleeve, and we walked out with this very nice western style bracelet and I get compliments I still wear it and I still get compliments on it all the time and I feel so guilty because that's all I can think of is that it was ill-gotten goods but it's a beautiful beautiful bracelet it does bring back that sense of guilt whenever I wear it especially if somebody compliments me on it has anybody ever complimented you on it and you're like oh thanks I stole it or my klepto husband stole it yeah (laughs) (laughs) what do people say (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they just look at me and laugh. And is that kind of a way to confess what you did? Mm-hmm. How much do you think the bracelet was worth or is worth? This was probably about 20 years ago, and it was still about a good $45, $50 bracelet. You know, that's still a considerable amount of money. I mean, obviously, we couldn't afford it. So, <laughs> How did you feel when you left? Bad, but I liked the bracelet. <laughs> is that it? Mm-hmm. It is beautiful. <laughs> so it's it's good and bad. You love it. Yeah. You can't let go of it. Right. Yeah. But it still makes mm-hmm. you feel guilty. Mm-hmm. Can can we post a picture of it online? Yeah. And and Joseph, what did he say when you when you got out of the store? Was he just, did he have like a rush? Yeah. Just... Yes, definitely, definitely. He he does get a rush out of it. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's part of it. Mm-hmm. It's not just to get stuff because you can't afford it. It's, he gets kind of a thrill out of it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So now you've progressed from saline solution to watch batteries to a bracelet, jewelry. Mm -hmm. What was next? The next was a picnic table. And again, at Walmart, it was like summertime. They had this picnic table assembled for display and we kind of liked it. And we went looking for a clerk to see how much they were and we were going to purchase one. This was going to be a legitimate purchase. But it didn't turn out that way. Always in the moment. Always ready to pounce on that opportunity when it presented itself. He found one. I can't imagine how you put a picnic table underneath a bag of Purina dog chow. So I'm waiting. There was no dog food involved in this heist. (laughs) So we went looking for the clerk, couldn't find one. And we were parked on that side of Walmart where the garden center is and whatnot. So we were pretty close to there. He just pulled the car around and backed it up. And we put the picnic table in the back of his car and drove off. Wow. And he really liked that picnic table. You still have it? <laughs> no, no. It was outside, so it eventually warped and got used for firewood. <laughs> okay, so what was your feeling when you were driving away from that heist? Actually, I think on that one, I was kind of excited, mm-hmm. you know, because I was like, woohoo, a picnic table. And what did he say when you drove away? Oh, he was happy. Yeah. At this point, though, it seems like you're being turned, right? He's Because you're feeling good about it now. I mean, it sounded that way. Yeah, um... But to that point, when he and I were still together, I think that was the last of the stuff that we, that he, we, well, as we, the last of the stuff that as a couple that, that we did, that pretty much stopped. And uh, of course, he's still a very good friend of mine today. Um, He's lost his eyesight, so I take him to a lot of appointments and whatnot. Also, I take him shopping and he does continue his (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is very interesting. You're still really good friends with Joseph. Yeah, that did not happen immediately. But yeah, after he got diagnosed with his blindness, and he had a stroke at the same time. And after that, then, you know, we resumed our friendship. His blindness progressed. So he just needs help with transportation and filling out paperwork and whatnot. So I help him with that. What was the beginning of the end of your relationship? The beginning of the end was uh, we had been together for six years. And in those six years, he held seven different jobs and they were all tried to get rich quick little scams and then finally when he did land a good job self-employed basically he still did not pay into taxes or anything like that you know and it just he made good money and it went to his head because that's the first time he had ever really made like serious good money and it went to his head he just started spending money like crazy and uh, wooing other women and you know that's how that all happened because you know he got a hold of a woman that saw that he liked to spend money and that's what attracted this other female to him was that he was willing to spend all the money he had on her and that's obviously where our relationship deteriorated and ended 
So to this day, he continues with this petty theft at grocery stores and the like. I do not help with that. I know what he's doing because I take him to the grocery store. And when he goes to check out, I swipe the card, I put in his PIN number, and I walk away. <laughs> but how, help me understand, he's blind, so how, how is he stealing? I would think it would be harder for a blind person to, to steal stuff from a store. So how does he do that? Since he's disabled, he only gets a check once a month, food stamps once a month. So he goes shopping and he has a full cart, cases of bottled water, and he'll stack them on the bottom of the cart. And somehow all those items just kind of mask the water that's underneath. And I would say two out of three times he gets away with it. You help him stack the the cart. Um, oh, God, this is bad. <laughs> Believe it or not, no, because typically his uh, 15-year-old grandson comes shopping with us. And so it's his grandson that puts I those. I see. So the grandson is the accomplice. Joseph, I mean, his grandson is Joseph, too. He does not realize at the end what's going on. You know, he's just told, put the water, you know, pick up the water, put it there. But when we get to check out, he he doesn't know what's going on. I do. So you're an accomplice still, but... No, I walk away. Mm -mm. (laughs) I'm walking away from that transaction. Joseph Sr. is telling Joseph Jr. to stack stuff up at the bottom. You swipe the pin card. You get out of there. And he Mm -hmm. uh, makes the purchase... And there's stuff in the bottom of the cart, and generally it never gets checked. There we go. Why doesn't it get checked? I mean, when I go to the supermarket, they always look at the bottom of my cart. I know, right? This is just this guy's luck. I mean, he gets away with it. He's never even been questioned. Hmm. There was another time, so I was there swiping his card and whatnot, and for whatever reason, it wasn't going through. It was kind of having a problem. And out of the blue, the cashier holds up three $20 bills and says, oh, is this yours? Where did this come from? My ex, I guess he clicked onto that real quick. He knew it wasn't his. He never carries that much cash on him. And so he's like, oh yeah, I must have dropped it. And you can tell just by looking at him that, you know, he has an eyesight problem, you know, because one eye is kind of bulgy and just looks really weird and different. That's the eye that's dead, you know, so it's, and then the other eye, he can't really focus. So, you know, he doesn't always like look you in the eye or whatever. You know, so it's apparent that he has some kind of vision impairment. And so, of course, he goes, oh, I must have dropped it. I'm sorry. And I just didn't see. So she goes, "Okay," And she hands him the $80. And I'm so mad at this point. I'm like, I hate you. I really hate you. (laughs) You get away with all this, you know, because I bought groceries there, too. I paid a couple hundred for mine. And there he is. And he's, he's making money. And he's up 80, you know? Just upsets me. And then there's still another time. We get up to the register. Then the cashier says, okay, that's like $20. But he snapped knowing that full well that he owed more than $20. And so he just pulled out a 20 out of his wallet and just paid it for like that so we could get out as quick as possible, you know? So again, when we get out to his car, I'm cursing him. <laughs> I hate you. How do you continually get away with this? <laughs> And I never have that kind of luck, but I never try that kind of stuff. Sounds like he's lucky he never got caught. Very lucky. Very lucky. And I think it's just because he doesn't look like a criminal. He's a nice looking guy and funny. And he doesn't really talk about his things a whole lot because he doesn't see anything wrong with it. So there's not nothing much to boast about. <laughs> a $5 bottle of context which isn't, isn't really a, a thing you want to boast about. I got a case of water. <laughs> That's not going to gain him entry into the mob. (laughs) Yeah, that's not a good resume (laughs) for mob activity. Now, this is all kind of small-time stuff. It is pretty small-time, but, I mean, this is ongoing over the 20 years that I've known him. He likes the get-rich schemes, which obviously has gotten him nowhere. (laughs) Did did he ever share his ill-gotten gains with you? No. In the past, of course, I worked. And now I'm retired, and he figures, well, you know, you're not working. You get a check. And but you are driving the getaway car. You are, you know, do. <laughs> I know nothing of it. <laughs> I walked away from that register. I had no clue what the end of that transaction was like. What have you learned from this? Um, well, I guess, you know, the point is, even if it's small things you know it just isn't worth it because I, I don't know like 
like I said with the bracelet, I have a bad feeling about that bracelet. I love this bracelet, but it still gives me that bad memory that this was a stolen piece of jewelry, you know, and it does mean a lot to me, you know, because I like it. Uh, but, you know, there's that sense of, oof, you know, and so now I know when I go grocery shopping, I mean, I'm, I would never pull a heist like that. I make sure that the clerk is aware of every single item that's in my cart. Did you ever feel like you should turn him in, or did you ever feel like you no. wanted to turn him in? No. Yeah. Eh, that's his karma. Cheryl sticks by her ex-husband in friendship, helping him with his food stamps, and unwittingly driving the getaway car every month. There are worse things, I guess. It's still wrong, though. Cheryl, thanks a lot for joining me. It was a lot of fun having you in the secret room. Well, thank you. And it was a lot of fun being with you here in the secret room. Anyone missing my co-host, Dahlia Beta? She dispatched this little soundbite to share on the show. What's your secret? Really? That's crazy. Oh. Oh, bless you. Don't forget, you can share a secret just by calling the secret line at 929-265-TSRP or at our website, secretroompodcast.com. The theme from The Secret Room was composed and performed by Breakmaster Cylinder. What else you got for us, Cheryl? You can follow the show on Twitter at Secret Room Pod. And that's where we've posted your ill-gotten bracelet? Yeah. <laughs> you can also see it at facebook.com slash secretroompod. And before we close the door on another edition of The Secret Room, a quick request to you, our base, to leave a sparkly five-star review on iTunes. You might feel a little sparkly to yourself afterwards. I've heard that happens. Sometimes. Thanks a lot for listening. See you next time. I'm Ben Ham, and this is The Secret Room. Oh, oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Pod on. Pod on.